A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Mathematicians, welcome back to another video. An internet buddy of mine, Chris Smith, uh, who was also a participant in my recent charity event on Christmas, um, a story often told, check it out if you haven't done so already, um, shot me a Twitter message with one of his recent tweets and it was this one right here. Hey, come here. Yeah, you, come here, come here. Shh, don't tell anyone, but you've been doing Pythagoras wrong for years. So here's some examples using some dead famous Pythagorean triples. And usually for your Pythagoras theorem, you'd be adding, uh, squaring sides and adding them together to get the hypotenuse. But if you're looking for the hypotenuse, just take the smallest side, for example, three, square it, take away the other side. Three squared, nine, take away four, it's five. Boom. This one here, if I take the smallest side, it's five squared, take away 12, 25, take away 12 is 13. Boom. Which I find to be a very peculiar property and I wanted to explore it a tiny little bit more. At first I'm going to present you a proof of why that works, a proof I came up with. He's also going to present this very proof um, in his maths newsletter that he is um, posting for free on the internet. So definitely check out his um, Twitter page. And yeah, other than that I found out a few pecu peculiar properties that just come with this whole structure of right triangles that he presented in his little skit video. And now we are going to dive right in I hope you are going to enjoy the video so let us take a look at two right triangles of that form once again so thing is um, there's just one thing for the proof that you need to take into consideration which is the most important property for all of this to actually work out namely we have one shorter side and one longer side and the longer side is always one unit less in each and every example that he, that he presented than the hypotenuse Okay, so the hypotenuse is always one unit longer than the other longest side that you have here, be it the opposite or the adjacent of a certain angle in there. And this is basically the main property that you need to take into consideration and then the proof just works out very nicely. So at first we are going to construct our sensor right triangle once again and we are going to say without loss of generality, we are going to say that the shorter side in this triangle is called A, then we have a side length B and by this very property that we have right here, we have a hypotenuse C, which is going to be one unit longer than our longest other side length in here. And now, by Papa Pythagoras, we know that A squared plus B squared is hence nothing but the hypotenuse squared, meaning this is going to give us B plus one squared. And now we can just make use of the binomial theorem on here, leaving us with A squared plus B squared being thus nothing but B squared plus two B plus one. And a very cool thing is, and now everything unfolds nicely, um, and that's also completely equivalent, is that b squared is going to cancel out on both sides. And now we are going to be left with one of the coolest facts, in my opinion. Namely, we have that a squared is thus nothing but 2b plus one. And under the assumption that a and b, and also c, hence, um, are all integers, that also means that a squared so we got a perfect square here, is going to be an odd number, which is going to result in something very nice that we are also going to prove in this video. But just keep in mind that we are going to get an odd number for now on our a squared. And now to arrive at a peculiar property, what we need to do is we just need to subtract one B on both sides, leaving us with exactly what he presented in his little skit, namely that A squared minus B is nothing other than B plus one, which is indeed our side length C. And that's basically everything. Okay, we can place a QED, a QED stamp here. Okay, if you haven't gotten yourself a nice QED stamp yet, you can find it over on Stamberge. Okay, we are selling those, which I find to be really cool. Okay, you can put a QED stamp here on the um, chalkboard. But yeah, um, this already uh, com completes the proof of, of this very property. And now I would like to dive into a few more things, okay, that just come with this whole structure of right triangles. So the first very nice thing is that with this property that we have given here, a squared is equal to 2b plus 1, and after that we are going to get that a squared minus b is hence nothing but our side length c, we can actually really easy uh, generate infinitely many Pythagorean triples using a simple Python script, uh, script just like this one right here. Oh. And yeah, what you might notice in this Python script though is the fact that if we take a look at um, all the side lengths b that they are all even numbers. You will not find 
an odd number there. I mean, if we go through the first thousand samples, for example, um, then you are going to notice that there are no odd numbered sides B in there, which I find to be quite an interesting fact. And if we take a look at those two sample triangles, yeah, it, it does indeed hold. So what we have all the time is we have two odd side lengths and we have exactly one even side length. And I was thinking, well, um, is that tr true in general? Is that a true property that holds for triangles like this? And yes, it is indeed true. And I would like to prove this here too. So um, <laughs> one thing is already really easy. Namely, we always know that the shortest side length is going to be an odd number. This just follows from this fact I told you before. Namely, a squared, so a perfect square in a is going to be an odd number and the square is um, if it's equal to an odd number that also means that the number which is going to be squared is also going to be an odd number. Okay that's an equivalent formulation so let me write it out. Um, if we have a squared being nothing but 2b plus 1 that is equivalent to saying that our a is nothing but 2k plus 1 so of the form. Meaning our a is definitely always going to be an odd number. I think I proved this fact before in the video about how mathematicians prove things. Other than that, just think about it like this. If you have, for example, um, five squared being a square, okay, then um, five times five is 25, it, it's an odd number, but also five was an odd number, just as a numerical example. Um, so we got rid of one side length, namely the shortest one. This is definitely going to be an odd side length. Now, what about, um, for example, B? Is it always supposed to be an even number? So, doesn't there exist a triangle, for example, 5, um, 13, 69, I don't know, which is going to have three odd side lengths in general? And no, this cannot happen. And now we are going to um, do a little proof by contradiction. Namely, what we are going to do is we are going to assume for the sake of a contradiction that our B is indeed going to be an odd side length too. Okay, we are going to say, okay, by our assumptions, A is of the form 2K plus one. And we have that B is also an odd number, namely of the form 2N plus one. And now why not um, plug everything into uh, one of these equations that we got here, okay? We're going to say that um, now a squared is equal to 2b plus one is equivalent by those assumptions that we did um, to, okay, we're going to get, so a squared is going to result in 4k squared plus 4k. And also we are going to get plus one being thus equal to, so on the one hand, what we're going to get is 2b plus one. Okay, I'm going to write it out like this because one and one is going to cancel out on both sides. Now we are going to be left with 2b, which um, by the property of b that we have here is going to result in 4n plus two overall. And now what we can do, which is going to um, give us um, uh, a contradiction immediately, is we are going to divide both sides by two, okay, leaving us overall with, okay, we are going to have 2k squared plus 2k, we can factor out the two, which is going to give us 2k squared plus k, being thus nothing but, and now we are going to be left with, if we divide both sides by two, 2n plus one. And this right here is a contradiction and I'm going to tell you why that is the case. Namely, what do we have on the left side here? I mean, k, um, by our definition of an odd number is going to be an integer, meaning we have two times an integer, which is an even number, okay? So this part right here is even. But what do we, uh, do we have here? 2n plus one, oh, 2n plus one, by our assumption is nothing but b, but this is an odd number. And I think I made a video on that and a proof on that, namely that no natural number or integer can be both odd and even at the same time, meaning we land at a contradiction, meaning overall B is definitely going to be even. So we now know that A is going to be, so the shortest side is always going to be an odd number, but B is supposed to be an even number. Now what about C? I mean C, can it be an even number? No, it cannot. By our original assumption, namely that C is one unit longer than our B, meaning we're going to have, since b is an even number, something of the form 2n plus 1, which is by um, basically the definition of an odd number, an odd number. Meaning hypotenuse is always odd, our a shorter side length also odd, and our b is going to be an even number. Which is quite interesting, um, if you ask me. Um, quite an interesting property. I found this really curious <laughs> that you can um, extract such a statement from, from such a simple idea, such as um, getting a side length one unit bigger than another side length. And those were basically all the insights I wanted to share about 
what we have here. Um, one other insight that I found to be really cool is just the fact that basically there's a Pythagorean triple or just a right triangle with um, always an odd numbered side length. Okay, doesn't matter uh, greater than uh, one obviously, doesn't matter if you have three, five, seven, nine, all of those odd numbers, odd natural numbers are going to give you a Pythagorean triple of, of sorts, which I find to be really cool. One last property I want to share is, um, or one last idea, it's, it's not a property, is to expand this um, idea for side lengths, which are like two units bigger than the longest side length in the triangle or three units longer. For example, for the two units longer, I also found that to be quite interesting. Uh, let, let's suppose that C is nothing but B plus two, leaving us with A squared plus B squared is thus B plus two squared, giving us B squared plus four B plus four. Now this and that is going to cancel out in the process once again. You are going to notice that we can factor out a four here. So we are going to have four times b plus one. Dividing both sides by four is going to give us a squared over four, which is just going to be if we factor out the squared, a over two squared is equal to b plus one. And um, what I find to be really cool is that with this easy property you can extract Pythagorean triples which give you three even side lengths. I think the smallest Pythagorean triple that you can find with even side lengths is if you start with the shortest side length, once again we suppose that A is the shortest side length, um, with shorter side length of 6. Um, this is going to result in something very nice and I constructed this by supposing that our A is going to be an even number, okay, A even, meaning it's of the form A equals 2 to n and then I suppose after cancelling out the 2 we are going to get an odd n, okay, and it doesn't work for 1, Okay, because uh, we can't have a side length in the Pythagorean triangle which, side, uh, which has side length 1. This just doesn't work out. Um, so n being equal to 3 is the next number. Leaving us overall with, um, after cancelling out the 2's, we are going to get 3 squared is nothing but b plus 1. And 3 squared is nothing but 9. And 9 ben can be constructed by 8 plus 1. Meaning our um, b is equal to 8. And by this assumption c is equal to 10 giving us an even side length um, Pythagorean triple with the side length 6, 8, 10, which I find to be really cool, always two units apart. And yeah, um, can you come up with more nice properties surrounding just making side length bigger than another side length by a few units? I would like to know, leave some comments down there below. If you like what you saw today, then you might also like what our today's sponsor Brilliant has to offer on their website because I tell you what, they have so many geometry, algebra, number theory courses up their sleeve. It's a very nice place to work through everything. Special cases can be quite interesting in and of themselves, right? If you also want to dive deeper into the basics of elementary geometry, number theory and algebra, like I mentioned just a second ago, then I encourage you to try out Brilliant today. With their nearly 70 interactive courses in various STEM disciplines, including mathematics, physics, computer sciences and many more, Brilliant offers you the perfect mix of problem solving, visualizations as well as understanding the underlying theories and fundamentals. If you never tried out a site like Brilliant before, then I would like to give you my recommendation today because their course concept just feels so nice and refreshing and also very refined and adds a great additional twist to the regular educational system that you are probably used to from school. And if you're still not convinced yet, then I invite you to try out Brilliant for free, at least a big portion of it already, by checking out the link at the top of the description. Um, like mentioned before, you can try out a bunch of content on their website already for completely free, but the first 200 people to actually make use of the link, meaning buy themselves a premium subscription, actually get 20% off the set premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they have on their website available already. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. It really, really supports the channel if you try out Brain. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, my comment channel for like if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy those t-shirts I created to support the channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys um, a Barnsley Fern Fractal Day. See ya! <laughs>